What is up guys? Welcome back to the channel and we are continuing on our top five list um, of 2022 for the Golf Ball Attic Golf Ball Awards. So we just got done with the longest golf balls and uh, we are now moving on to the most spinning golf balls of 2022, which really isn't going to be just 2022. I've been reviewing golf balls for the last two and a half years um, and I haven't ever done the awards yet. That's always something I've wanted to do. So uh, there's going to be some phone from back there, but I think you'll still get a, an enjoyment out of it. Most of these golf balls are still sold today and if not, they just have an updated version. Um, but hey, if you're new to the channel here, my name's Nick and uh, I am a golf ball addict and I basically test two-piece golf balls, three-piece, four-piece, direct-to-consumer, uh, black market, anything you want I will test you know under the radar. Um, my goal is to find the perfect golf ball for the average swing speed which is me. I swing about 92, 91 mile an hour and uh, you know basically that's how my reviews and how my results are tailored. So if you came to this list thinking you were going to find the Pro V1 and the TP5 and the you know Chrome Soft and all these high-end really firm golf balls on this list, you probably won't just because the average swing speed isn't going to compress them. So stick around. You'll probably be surprised by the results. I was, and I made the list. So I know you probably will be too. So um, we're going to go ahead and get into the top five. Now, again, I do categorize this by certain factors. I add up seven iron spin, five hybrid spin and driver spin. The reason I do that is I want to see overall what golf ball spins the most, not just with one specific club. Now you might be asking me, well, Nick, why don't you do pitching wedge or wedges? That's a good question. Unfortunately, when I used to start the channel back in the day, I had a Mevo launch monitor and it did register spin with the pitching wedge. I used to do a 50 yard pitch. I used to do a pitching wedge and I was able to get numbers that way, but I had to switch over to the Swing Caddy 300i. Uh, just because the Mevo wasn't getting consistent results anymore, and that doesn't do spin for 9-iron and up. So the only thing I can get spin with is a 7-iron. So going back and looking at the golf balls I used to review compared to ones I've done over the last 6-7 months, it just it, it makes it too difficult, so I have to take those out. But what I did do is if I had amazing results from a golf ball back then off of that, I put it in the honorable mention section. You're going to see a really, really long honorable mention section on this one just to kind of showcase what some of those numbers were and some of those those results. That way, you know, they're not left out. Unfortunately, I just didn't have any hard evidence, so I wasn't able to put them in this list because I've also switched clubs since then. Um, there's been all kinds of factors, and I just want to make sure I have the most consistent results for the top five. So with that being said, let's get into the top five most spinning golf balls of 2022. Number five, the Wilson Triad. Now, I didn't have great results with the Wilson Triad. I was actually very disappointed in it just because I'd heard such amazing things, but it was just too firm for me. Um, however, when you look at the numbers as far as spin, it was the fourth ranked spin on the seven iron, sixth on the hybrid, and with the driver, it was third. So again, nothing spectacular right there. It's kind of like the Mizuno balls. I, I have a lot of like, a lot of okay, but nothing amazing. Uh, a lot of things good. That's how the uh, the triad was here. It's a pretty high spinning golf ball. And listen, if you can swing a little faster than 92 mile an hour, if you can get up to about 98 to 100, that triad I guarantee you is going to spin quite a bit because I've seen other channels review of it and it's supposed to be pretty good. But your average swingers and your uh, your slow swingers need to stay away. Number four. The Uther Tour Icon. This one kind of came from left field, I'll be honest with you. When I tested this golf ball, it had some good numbers, um, but unfortunately, it kind of just fell flat as far as everything else. You know, it just didn't have anything that was outstanding. Uh, but when it comes to spin, after looking over the numbers, it was the third highest spinning 7-iron, the fifth highest uh, five hybrid and then the fourth highest driver spin. So honestly, you know, it, it wasn't bad and I was able to get some pretty good numbers that way just because when you have a moderate swing speed, you do want some backspin to get the ball up in the air so it goes a little further, but you don't want too much to where it's going to kind of balloon on you. And the Uther kind of was a good balance in between to be honest with you. And that's, that's where those numbers come from. And overall, it put it in the top five. Number three, the Anesis 900, again, a golf ball I really love. It made third in my value tour ball list. Um, it's still a golf ball I game today. I love the distance numbers on it. I love the overall feel. It's an amazing golf ball. Seriously, it really is. If you haven't, if you haven't seen it, you ought to check it out. Um, but the Anesis 900 did really well here just because uh, when it came to the seven iron, yeah, it wasn't that high. It was ranked sixth. But when it came to the hybrid, it was third. And that's really important to get spin on a hybrid because it's hard to stick a green with a hybrid. So I was really impressed with that. And then when it came to 
to the driver. I was actually second. It had a pretty high spin for the driver, which is why I was able to get one of the better distance numbers with my driver because I was able to get the ball a little bit higher in the air because of that spin. Um, 31, 3100 is just what it averaged, 3150. That's probably a little higher than I would want it. I'd probably want to stay around the 29 to 3,000 range based on my swing speed, but it's still a high spinning golf ball, which means it's going to bite everywhere no matter what club you use, which is really cool. Um, and as far as spin goes, it's going to be one of the hardest to beat. Number two, the Bridgestone Tour BRXS. I hate Bridgestone's names. I absolutely hate their names. They need to rebrand that, but I understand. But this golf ball, listen, this is the one that's under 105 mile an hour swing speed. They have two golf balls for under 105. They have two for over 105. Um, and the spin model, the one, the one that's specifically meant for spin, and spin it does, my friends. It's spin, spin, spin. So listen, uh, yeah, with the 7-iron, it was ranked 5th. Uh, with the hybrid, though, it was ranked 1st. However, 5,000 RPM with the hybrid, which was insane. I've never come close to that. That's the undisputed winner there. And then when you look at the driver, it ended up being... And with the driver, it ended up being 5th. So with that being said, you know, you have all those numbers. You know, it, it was top 5, barely, 1 top five, but that actually put it at the same score as the Anesis 900. But I went ahead and gave the second spot to the uh, the Bridgestone just because, um, honestly, I, I got a lot more better around the greens, chipping, putting, things like that. Uh, not putting, obviously, but chipping and pitching around the green. That ball stopped on a dime, and so I did give it the second spot. It spins. If you're needing some help with your spin, I can't imagine you do much better than the Bridgestone Tour. B-R-X-S. <laughs> All right, so a little bit of a switch up here. As you can see, a complete wardrobe change. My hair's now cut. Um, basically, long story short, um, I shot the video, this video, a week before I was going to edit it. Uh, when I went to edit it, I realized that I had a complete, complete brain lapse and uh, did not do the honorable mention section. Just completely went on to number one and just never even thought twice about it. I don't know what happened, maybe it was a long night, but this is actually the longest honorable mention section out of any of the top five videos I've done so far. Uh, so it was pretty important that I actually get it on there. So again, sorry for the wardrobe change, I don't know what I was thinking, but I do want to call out some honorable mentions as far as ball spinning. First up, the Cut DC. So the Cut DC, when I did my initial review of it, uh, my main knock against it was that it just spun too much. I mean, I got almost 8,500 RPM with a 7-iron, which was crazy. I mean, I noticed when I was on the golf course, you know, anytime I hit a green, that ball was jumping somewhere. If it was a draw, it was jumping left. If it was a cut, it was jumping right. Um, no matter what, if it was straight, it was coming back at me. This ball spun a lot. And uh, although I don't know 100% the concrete numbers, especially with my new clubs, but I do know it's a high spinning golf ball. And if you need some help, it's usually one I recommend. The TP5 also, I mean, of course it makes sense. It's a five layer golf ball. It's one of the most spinning in golf. And frankly, around the greens, it'll pretty much stop on a dime. Um, of course, with your long irons and your irons, you gotta have a pretty fast swing speed to compress it. But when you're just chipping around the greens even, this golf ball really grabs. Um, there's been many times I've been actually chipping at a hole and I'll hit it and I'll end up about five or six yards short just because it hits and stops immediately and it's a learning curve. I have to kind of learn how to redo my chips with this golf ball. That's how high it spins. I don't have any concrete numbers yet because I haven't tested it yet, but I do know just from using it around the greens how much it really does spin. Same thing with the Callaway Chrome Soft. Callaway Chrome Soft has a lot of spin. It actually feels pretty soft compared to most of the tour balls out there. And it's able, especially with the X model being a four piece, it's able to grip the green pretty well. Uh, both of these models really do, to be honest with you. Again, haven't tested the numbers. I don't know exactly what they would come up as as a total, but I know the golf ball does spin really well. And if you're needing some checkup on your short game, um, these tour balls do exactly as they intend to. The Strixon Z-Star and Z-Star 15. So these golf balls, it was incredible. This was back when I could actually do a pitching wedge and I could do a 50 yard pitch. Um, and these golf balls got almost 10,000 RPM from me as an average swing speed with the pitching wedge. And then I think they were like eight to 9,000 on the 50 yard. That is insane. That is a high, high, high amount of spin. And if you're needing some checkup, some bite, you're playing a tough course, you need to work the ball. Uh, now keep in mind, you gotta be a pretty good iron striker and you gotta be a pretty low handicap to do that type of thing. But if you are in that category and you need that help, both of those golf balls perform really, really well. And you'll notice a lot of finesse players on the on tour will play the Strixon balls because if they finesse the ball and they're really good at it, that's the golf ball they really like. It does a great job at it. 
the Q-Star Tour Divide. So this one actually was not tested with the new clubs, which is a shame, but it honestly checks up really well. Now it doesn't check up as well as the Z-Star or the TP5 or the Cut DC, but for being a three-piece golf ball at the $35 price range, it actually spins pretty well. And even being a matte cover, it grips that green really nicely. And honestly, I, I, I'm really impressed with its amount of spin. I wish I could have tested it more. I'm definitely gonna be doing an updated test soon so I can get some regular numbers with it with the new equipment. Um, but it's still spun a lot. I still got really good numbers with it. And even when I use it on the golf course today, I still get a lot of checkup. And so I know it definitely deserves an honorable mention. I'm gonna go ahead and shout out the Vice line as well. Again, the Vice line was before I got all this new updated stuff, uh, but the, the Vice Pro Plus, the Vice uh, Pro, and the Vice Pro Soft all spin really well. I didn't get as much spin with the Pro Soft, which I thought was weird. Um, honestly, the, the ones I got the really high spin with was the Pro and the Pro Plus, which with me only having a 91 mile hour swing speed, I was really surprised. Um, but both of them spun really high, you know, the high 9,000 RPM with a pitching wedge back in the day, and then 50 yard pitch in the 8,000 range, 8,500. I think as well. Uh, both of those numbers are fantastic and so those golf balls have a lot of spin and when you think about the value also it's really incredible because you can get them for $35 a dozen or if you order in bulk you can get it for up to like $28 a dozen and that's really good for a high spinning golf ball. The Vero X1, uh, the Encore. So again, another. this golf ball was a four piece. Um, I loved how it felt. I didn't get the best distance numbers with it because I just don't think I was compressing it well enough. But as far as the spin goes, boy, it spun. It spun a lot, got great spin numbers off of pretty much every club. Um, and honestly, it, it's gonna check up on any green. It has a big, uh, thick urethane coating. So if you're needing some checkup, that X1 definitely will help you out. Not a great value though, unfortunately. It is gonna come in at $40. And to be honest with you, if you have to pay for shipping, it's $40. So it ends up being kind of the same price as a Pro V1. But if you happen to find one on the course or, you know, you can get them in bulk or if you're a loyalist, um, honestly, they perform really well. The Snell Black. Now, I think they're coming out with a new model this year, so I can't wait to test that with the new uh, clubs and the new setup. Uh, but I got incredible spin numbers with the Snell Black. And again, it makes sense because Snell, you know, basically pioneered uh, TaylorMade's TorMade golf balls and they also the Pro V1. And so he knows what he's doing. It doesn't surprise me at all that he was able to get a ton of spin. And then this one kind of comes from left field a little bit too, but the Titleist True Feel. So Titleist actually, this is their two-piece golf ball. It's a little firmer for a two-piece golf ball. I didn't have the best distance numbers with it by any means, but as far as the spin, it did really well. I was honestly really impressed with it. And honestly, I, I as far as a two-piece golf ball goes, you're not gonna find much more spin than that. Um, it actually was able to check up really well with pitching wedge. And uh, you know, as far as you know, hitting the irons and everything, it launched high and it spun well. So honestly, if you're in the beginner stages and you're not, able to work the ball that well, but you'd like to be able to stick a green here and there, it might be a good ball to try out. And that's it for honorable mentions. If you're wondering why the Pro V1 get, didn't get in there, it's because, I'll be honest with you, I didn't get really great spin numbers with the Pro V1. I think I got 7,500 with the 50 yard pitch and maybe like 8,000 with the pitching wedge. It was one of the lowest, just because I wasn't able to compress it as much, so I, I didn't put it in the honorable mention, although it is a very high spinning golf ball. Um, but that's it for honorable mentions. Let's go ahead and get to number one. Number one. The Zexio 11, guys, this ain't a good golf ball. I'm gonna be honest with you. It sucks that the top spot had to be a golf ball that I can't stand. This golf ball went way too high in the air and it spun way too much. The numbers were abysmal. It's probably one of the top three worst golf balls I've tested, but here are the numbers when it comes to spin. It was second in seven iron, fourth in hybrid, and number one by four. Far, almost 3,600 RPM of spin with the driver, which put it at the top spot. It, it balloons way too much. Um, but if you're going out on a course and you just say, hey, I really, really, really want some spin. Like I want to see some backspin. I don't care how I play. Go ahead and give it a shot because you'll see some spin for sure. It definitely comes way too high off the club. And when you combine that with these spin numbers, you're bound to get just about any club to come back at you. You could probably hit a four or five iron and have it come back or stop on a dime on you. So Guys, as always, keep watching to keep saving, keep learning. Another top five. I really love it. And again, I appreciate everyone who's new here. The, the videos are doing really well. Stick around. We got more coming out. I got more golf ball reviews. 2023 is going to be an amazing year. I promise, guys. Until next time.